The main benefits of trenchless tunneling technology compared to open-cut trenching are Minimum impact on the environment Minimum damage to the seabed No deterioration of seawater quality Fewer emissions Minimum impact on existing infrastructure Realization in densely built-up urban areas possible No disturbance to tourism No limitation on shipping traffic Longer lifetime of the pipeline Less risk of subsidence, higher seismic safety Better protection against storms, hurricanes, and the corresponding impacts Better protection against general environmental impacts Protection of the pipeline Minimum efforts to reinstate the site following pipe installation Independent of weather conditions and waves during the construction phase For the installation of sea outfalls and intakes, horizontal directional drilling, direct pipe, segment lining, microtunneling technology may be used, depending on the site and ground conditions, pipe diameter, and length of the pipe string to be installed. However, feasibility, technology, and economic factors are important. The following animation shows the installation of new sewer pipes DN600 in an urban crossroad with dense traffic. The whole construction site can be located in a way that only one lane is blocked. In our example, 150 meters of sewer pipe are to be jacked from the launch shaft to the reception shaft. At the first stage, the area around the starting shaft is cordoned off to divert the traffic. Due to the compact design of the machine and the small diameter of the starting shaft, there will only be minor disruption to the traffic flow. In this case, the starting shaft consists of a round shaft of reinforced concrete with an inner diameter of 3.2 meters. The compact jacking frame is then placed into the starting shaft and the slurry discharge pump is mounted on a platform adjacent to the jacking frame. The operating container with the control panel and the hydraulic power pack is located on the top rear side of the shaft. A pipe stock is then established and maintained in front of the shaft to feed the shaft crane. The slurry feed pump and the slurry discharge pump are connected between the shaft and the control container and then connected through the separation plant to form a closed slurry circuit. The product pipes are lowered into the shaft one after the other and connected with snap connectors. The jacking frame works in three stages. After approximately one-third of the maximum piston stroke, the jacking arms return and the main thrust ring of the jack can advance further. After jacking the product pipe, the connecting hoses, which connect the TBM to the container, are disconnected. The jacking frame is returned to its original position and the next product pipe is connected. This procedure is duplicated again and again until the whole drive length is completed, reaching the reception pit. Crossing pipes in buildings are no problem with this technique, as they can be easily overpassed or undercrossed. Thus the machine arrives in the reception shaft exactly at the planned coordinates. Advantages Usable in almost all ground conditions and with high water pressures. Highest tunneling safety due to hydraulic tunnel face support. Ideal technology for tunneling in the non-man entry diameter range. Precise control even with small radii in vertical and horizontal curves. Very long pipe jacking stretches of more than 1000 M are possible with the use of intermediate jacking stations. In this example, a micro-tunneled pipeline connecting a caisson adjacent to the Mediterranean Sea to a submerged intake screening system at 12.5 meters depth. The intake tunnel comprises 240 meters of 1,516 millimeters ID steel casing micro-tunnel section joined to the intake screening system with a submerged 12.5 meters, 1,200 millimeters GRP pipeline. Radko was responsible for designing and administrating the El Marsa desalination project. Radko used a Heronect AVN 1200 MTBM system with a mixed ground cutter head to contend with the mixed face geology. 
The system includes an MT875K jacking frame with 700 tons of thrust capacity, a control container with the operator control console, power distribution center, an MTBM drive motor, a series of pumps to assist with excavation and slurry circulation, and a derrick slurry separation plant.